And truth be told, I just bought this load of hickory and I know it's green. So anyway, we're gonna keep pounding some coals to this. I might even go in here and get a little bit of this other dry stuff and put it on there too. It's wetter than I thought. Okay guys, so now we're ready to build a fire in this pit. And this is just a standard offset. Um, there's no deceit or trickery inside the cook chamber. I always call it that. We're talking about like baffles and things like that. This particular pit, I love how it runs with nothing in it. Um, anyway, I have a ton of podcasts about that. And I've even got a whole barbecue pit engineering with Frank uh, on an uh, uh, online course on smokerbuilderu.com. That's smokerbuilder, the letter U.com. And I'm going to be putting a full fire management video on there on this pit. Um, in this case, this pit is a legend offset. I'm not making them anymore because of my deal with Jeremy. And uh, if you look in here, there's nothing in there. We're burning right on the bottom. Um, the solution offset will burn the same way. Um, tons of more, tons of content coming out on that. But I'm going to show you how to light this pit and uh, get a good fire going in it. Get this thing up around 350 to 400 degrees. Let the let it all get up real hot and start to polymerize. Shoot, I might even run at 500 degrees. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to show you how to do that here and uh, get a good fire going. But today, instead of using charcoal, we're going to use the old match here. So whenever I'm lighting one of these offsets, I'm just going to give you kind of the crash course here. I leave everything wide open. So like right here, I got my stack all the way open. I'm gonna take and put a stick inside the door. I call that a door prop stick. The goal is, is to get maximum airflow through the distance of this pit. So here, I'm gonna do that real quick. I just use a little skinny stick. Don't spill your beer. Bam, there we go. Just need a crack. We just wanna get some air going through there. Now, when I'm building a fire in a pit like this that I'm gonna burn directly on the bottom, what I do is I build kind of a log cabin, kind of a setup here, and I'm using smaller splits. Let me get a few of those off my pile here. These will do nicely. So whenever I say the diameter of a log, I'm talking about this end. These are roughly an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. I put two on the bottom of this one because I've got octagonal sides here. And if yours is a smaller diameter firebox that's rounded, this is about 22 inches or so. You can actually bridge them diagonally like this if your splits are too long, or just put them all the way across if you've got bigger splits. I'm gonna go diagonally here with the longer splits. Matter of fact, I'm gonna trade that one out because I see a better one here. Boom, like that. We're just gonna kind of just stair step this thing up a little bit. I'm gonna go get one more stick. Here we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the torch and light it, and I'm just gonna kind of aim it right here. It's gonna be loud and roar and all that stuff. We're just gonna wait until these logs are fully combusted. Now, another little tip is, is whenever I'm splitting wood, there's always a bunch of like pieces of bark and little pieces of wood that chip off and stuff like that that lay on the splitter, fall on the ground. I'll usually keep a lot of that and I'll make that like kindling and I'll just throw it right in the middle of this pile. I don't actually think I got any today. But if I go over there to the wood pile, I'll probably find some. So maybe I'll grab it then. But anyway, real quick swig and I'll get this thing lit. Here we go. Now, one of the secrets on these, if you've never used one before, there's a BB, a little safety check valve inside the valve um, called an overflow protective device inside the stem on that barbecue bottle. When you open it too fast, all this hose fills up full of gas. The BB goes and closes it off because it thinks the bottle's just blowing wide open. So what you got to do is open it very slow. Same on this. Too much gas is, is a bad deal because you don't get the right mixture and it won't light. So if we just crack this a little bit, this is one of those good ones. There it is. <laughs> so I don't have to pull the trigger on this one. It's got a little safety knob here that you can open and shut. But if you need that super blast, you can pull the trigger and you can get it. We don't need a lot. All we're gonna do is just aim this torch right at this little pile of shag bark hickory here and just let it rock and roll until it's lit. Now, another thing to point out is I'm not aiming the torch at the bottom of my pit. I'm just aiming it down in the middle between these logs where it can get plenty of flow from that flame. And these logs are all gonna basically turn into charcoal right there. Once we get a really, really good uh, hot flame going here, It'll start to burn in and burn down, and it'll make it'll make its own charcoal. Then we can add more splits on top of it. In the long run, what we're trying to do is get a really good coal bed going. 
Now, the only part of the coal bed that matters is the part of the coal bed that is fully in contact with oxygen. When you start getting a whole bunch of ash and uh, stuff that's blocking the air, the air passage between those pieces of coal in the coal bed, it's going to start to choke airflow out from those things. And what will happen is, is it won't get enough air to make enough heat. So anyway, just kind of keep it cleaned out a little bit. We'll show you that in the fire management video over on Smoker Builder U. By the way, on that uh, fire management online course, um, I did uh, a 500 gallon reverse flow with a warming cabinet with a log rack in it. And I showed you how to light it two different ways, plus manage the fire. And then also I did a small uh, backyard offset, smaller than this. And I showed you several ways to light it. Then I showed you how to get the temp up and get the temp down. This next video is the first video in the series of burning directly on the bottom without a log rack or a charcoal basket. I think I did it enough, let's try. Now, one more thing you wanna pay attention to here is the wind direction. The wind, this is west that way, and the wind blows at my garage. And so when the wind blows to my garage, it kind of chooses a direction based on whatever happens in the wind, I don't know. And uh, so anyway, sometimes what'll happen is, is that wind will blow in and then sometimes it'll pull out. So whenever you're doing this, basically the goal is, is just to get a big enough fire going, which ours is not big enough yet. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, is that the wind will blow in and it'll suck out and it does all kinds of weird stuff. Basically, you never want your wind blowing directly into the firebox and you never want your wind blowing uh, uh, alongside the firebox. You want the wind to kind of quarter. So like come perpendicular to. That's why I've got the pit pointed this direction today. Because when that wind comes from the west, it's kind of blowing at this corner right here. So here's, here's something cool to see. Let me go get my Magna Chef glove and I'll pick it up and show it to you. Shout out to my bro, Al from Magna Chef. These are the Freedom Gloves. Let me show you the right way. Freedom Gloves. Um, routinely, I pick up lit logs with these things. They work really dang good. He's a firefighter. He knows all about this stuff. Look here. At the end of that log, see that moisture, that foam right there? So what that is, this is getting heated up and all the moisture and the sap and stuff like that is vaporizing and pushing itself out the end of the grain right here. That's what that is. You can hear it, literally hear it sizzling in there. And truth be told, I just bought this load of hickory and I know it's green. Uh, so anyway, I'm just using it anyway. But uh, when your wood is too wet, that's what you'll get. You'll get that moisture coming out the ends of it. The goal is to get a really, really, really hot coal bed, and then you'll be good. So anyway, we're going to keep pounding some coals to this. I might even go in here and get a little bit of this other dry stuff and put it on there too. It's wetter than I thought. So I might as well show you this too. Sometimes when you got a chunk like this piece of cherry here, it's real short, and there's really no knots in it or nothing like that. You can actually just take a hatchet on its edge and split this into some short pieces, which is what I'm going to do real quick. But you want to get some little pieces like this and throw in there down in the bottom if your wood's too wet and just get that thing a going real good. So we're going to rearrange this a little bit. So this is one of those moments where you thought you was prepared and your wood's too wet. So you got to kind of pivot, you know, so we'll just ca capture this on camera. And this cherry, I know it's, it's dry. It's been sitting in there for a while. And what did I say a minute ago? Cherry and hickory is awesome together. All right, let's light it up. Boys, now that fire is gonna be hot. So something else I'll show you here real quick to, that uh, is something that you should probably know too, is that whenever you see a fire like this working and it's seeking air, that means you got some pretty good action happening in there. So I'm just gonna let that thing sit here and turn into coals. And that'll be the start of our coal bed. So on the barbecue pit engineering classes, um, we get a lot of Q and A at the end. We do like the first half hour is instructional when it comes to pit design, fabrication, anything like that, uh, engineering kind of data, stuff like that. 
um, a lot of whiteboard scribbly drawings about like airflow and what it does. Well, um, along with that, we get a lot of questions about from guys that just built their pit that are having issues with it. And we answer all those in the Q and A section at the end of the, of the lesson. Um, this is one of those situations that I've actually answered two weeks ago. Um, the guy that was on the call, you can actually go back and watch it. It was in part two of our offset smoker fabrication section. But in that Q&A, uh, he was asking about uh, this situation where his wood was a little wet, what to do about it. And this is exactly what you do. Matter of fact, I don't even think I've ever seen a video about it. All right, so I'm going to let this cold bed do its thing for a little bit. And what I'm going to do is shut this door. I'm going to actually just run without the damper open this time, I think. I'm just going to use just the door. I'm going to crack it about, I don't know, two finger widths right here and just let it rock. Now, I've still got my cook chamber door open and I've got my smokestack wide open. Um, I don't see any smoke coming out. We're burning really hot, really clean. I'm going to go ahead and reset the camera a little bit and let you kind of see what we do next. Hey, so the camera doesn't do it justice. This pit looks phenomenal right now. I like the, so the rusty spots that were brown kind of darkened up. Um, as we start getting some heat on this thing, it's gonna start turning kind of a bronze color working that way. So I, I really like that personally. But uh, right now my uh, thermometers think we're running about 250. Once I get up above 200 with the door prop, I'm usually gonna pull it out and just let it rock and just let it draw through the cooker. I can see some thin blue smoke coming out the stack. I don't know if the camera can show that or not. There we go. Now that temperature's climbing pretty good. Not sure if you can see that. We got a really nice thin blue smoke coming out the stack. Um, now, when, you're, when your smoke clears up, typically that's an indication that you don't have like any more wood sitting on the fire. Your wood is actually turned into charcoal. So now it's burning really clean. That's a good indicator that you need to be able to add a log. Now, if you're, if you're running super high temperatures and you're at a situation where you need your cold bed to die down before you add logs, um, you know, don't add a log yet. Maybe remove some cold bed and then add a log. Um, but typically what will happen is uh, if your firebox is insulated, stuff like that, you're going to have to be careful how much fuel is in, that char is in that firebox so that you can run a little bit sloppier fire and get your smoke back. So... Anyway, I cover all that in those online courses. All right, guys, so now it's time to add another log on top of our fire here. Um, like I said, this wood right here is a bit green still, but I'm gonna use it anyway. We got a super hot coal bed. I can feel this thing rocking. Cook chamber is sitting up somewhere around 300 and uh, uh, around 300, 325 and rising. Now I need to put some more uh, fuel to this fire. I do wanna get it up over 400 degrees so this thing will polymerize correctly. Now, real quick before we, before we, while we're waiting here, this is the perfect split of wood, in my opinion. This thing is about, I don't know, three inches in diameter. Um, one way you can tell is if you got like a three inch coupling or some PVC pipe thing, if you can fit it in there, that's, a, that's what we call in manufacturing a go, no go. If it goes in, it's good. If it doesn't go in, it's a no go. So then we gotta go back and deal with it. Um, but this split here is probably about 12 inches long and about three inches in diameter. Whenever I'm cooking on a four foot cook chamber or smaller and sometimes even a little bigger pit, this is my preferred size piece of wood. You could actually just keep one of these handy and just kind of compare if you needed to. Um, once you get bigger than that, it's gonna take a little bit longer for this wood to come up and heat up um, on a smaller pit. It's not gonna engulf itself in flames right away. So um, anyway, that's what I prefer. Bark on, bark off, I could give a crap. I don't really even care. It burns just like the wood does. So I don't really get too hung up on it, especially if the wood's seasoned for a while. I've never noticed a difference in flavor because the wood had bark on it. I, I couldn't tell you a difference, honestly. So a way that you can tell that the oil is setting up is if it's sticky or not. Now I'm not gonna touch this firebox right now, but like on your cooking chamber and stuff like that, you can touch the oil and feel it being sticky. If it's sticky, you didn't get it hot enough. If you let it run and let it run and let it run till it get till the sticky goes away, it'll usually start smoking about that time. Now, here we go with the carcinogen crowd. Dude, everything's a carcinogen. Don't give me that, right? I mean, it, it's just everything in California is a carcinogen. So that's my personal opinion. Um, you know, try being a refrigeration guy for a living. That's what I did forever for 20, 30 years. 
I did that. So anyway, refrigerant, you know, chemicals for cleaning things like, you know, just be sensible, use safety, common safety practices, follow the instructions on the bottles. Don't just sit there and sniff it and inhale it. Like you'll be fine, right? You're not doing this. We're not like rats exposed to this in overdose quantities constantly every day. So, you know, don't, 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 don't go overboard with me on it. Um, if you were working in a factory doing this for a living, then you would need to take certain safety precautions. But I do this once a month if I remember to. <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. Fire is burning very nice. Let's see what my cook chamber temp is. Yeah, we're doing really good. Still a little bit wet and sticky. So at this point, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and end the video here because I've got some cooking ahead of me here to, to get this done. It's typically gonna take you running a fire like this at a higher temperature above like 350. So if you can get up to 400 degrees, run the fire for an hour or something like that, use your fingers on the cook chamber. When the cook chamber is starting to lose its stickiness, you're good to go. The key here is make sure that your temperature gets up hot enough to, to polymerize the oil. Um, as far as cleaning inside the cook chamber, once we get that hot, everything is gonna be pretty much burned up anyway. That's when I would go in here and start scraping with my Boyer brush on the cooking grates and stuff like that. Um, a little tip is uh, like before we did the video, I used, I'll show you. I used this uh, floor scraper. I bought this when I was building this house. It's a razor blade that's two-sided that uh, you know you use for like scraping floors and stuff. And uh, I use this to scrape inside my cook chamber everywhere um, because this is that's nice in here because this one's octagon shaped. It's flat, so it's super easy just to run this down the flats. Um, if you've got a rounded cook chamber, get something with a flexible blade maybe um, or something like that or even just go with the direction of the radius of the cook chamber. And uh, once you scrape all that uh, fat deposits and the built up stuff off the insides of the cook chamber, go up to the top of the cook chamber. And what you're gonna do is use a wire brush or the same tool, and you wanna get rid of all the flaky deposits that are on the inside. Sometimes after a pit's been sitting for a month, uh, whatever was built up on the inside, as it starts to dry out, it'll start to kind of flake off. You want to get rid of all that so it don't fall down on your food. Once you get all that done, now we're using a food safe oil. Pam, canola oil, lard, tallow, whatever you got laying around, doesn't matter, vegetable oil. And you're going to use something that's food grade. And then you're going to just go ahead and oil down that entire cook chamber. And one more trick I like to do, I've got another video about it on my channel. If you go back far enough, it's like how to clean, clean and season the inside of your smoker, propane tank smoker. What we're doing there is we're going to get this thing up above 300 degrees. Then we're going to take something and mist water in there. When you mist water in there, it's going to release all, if it's a brand new pit, it'll release all the machine oil out of the pores of the metal. We're steaming it at that point. So you spray that thing down really quick and shut the door and let that water, vape, that water vaporize and steam. And it's going to steam clean the inside of your cooker. All that nasty will run down the drain. Do repeat that once it gets up to 300 degrees, repeat that two or three times. And then once it dries out, put one more coat of oil on there. That's just kind of how I've always done it. I feel like that the oil kind of helps to, to grab some of that stuff whenever you're steaming the inside. If you don't do that, it's just gonna be like steam on there and some of it will come off, but the oil won't like grab it and pull it off in my opinion. Um, especially after you scrape with a scraper or something, it's easy to get all that stuff out of there. Now, if it's a brand, brand new pit that's built like with a propane tank or something, I do kind of recommend using a power washer and a scrub brush before you go in there and start the seasoning process. That's gonna help you get all the, just the, just the rust and stuff away from when you built the pit, um, whatever was inside there, you know, all the grinding debris and junk like that. Get all plasma dust uh, from when the cutter was running and stuff. Get all of that out of there, wash it down the drain, power wash the cooker, then go in there and start doing all this seasoning process. So anyway, appreciate you watching this video. Head on over to smokerbuilderu.com. 
There should be a, a well, I know that the uh, fire management course in there is in there, but pretty soon I'm gonna be launching that, uh, the next chapter of all that fire management video. The fire management online course is completely free, no strings attached. And I would invite you to come over there and hang out with me and all my buddies and uh, learn how to build pits, cook on them, and uh, run fires and stuff like that. Anyway, till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue, and we'll see you on the flip side.